All right, so today we're going to be talking about the foundations of freedom. If you have your Bibles, you can go ahead and open up to the book of uh, Proverbs. We're going to be hitting in Proverbs chapter 2, Proverbs chapter 3, three and Proverbs chapter uh, no, excuse me, chapter 2, chapter 4, and chapter 9. And so we're going to be kind of jumping to different places uh, in those books. But I love the, the, the beginning place where, where Christy began this class, and, and, and she shared the verse in uh, Matthew chapter 6, where, where Jesus is, is speaking during the Sermon of the Mount, and he was addressing the issue of worry and how people, you know, they worry about, you know, what am I going to eat? What am I going to wear? How am I going to fill my gas tank? with fuel you know how is there going to be food in the grocery store for me to buy and you know he began to address this issue and he said listen your father in heaven knows what you need even before you ask he says listen i got you i know where you're at it doesn't matter what generation you live in. It doesn't matter if you're in the generation when Jesus was, was walking on the earth or today in 2022. He's saying, listen, you don't need to worry. I got you. I know where you are. He says, listen, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be given to you. And I love that this is the verse that started out the, this, this teaching that we've been talking about on freedom is at the starting place when it become, comes to any issue in our lives, whatever it is that we're seeking God for, whether it be for provision, whether it be for deliverance in a particular area, whether it's about wisdom or direction or whatever it may be in life, he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these things will be given to you. That we need to be seeking after the kingdom. And so we wanna talk a little bit about the foundations of that tonight and what that looks like, seeking that kingdom. And I hope this, this kind of builds on, on, on what Pastor Christie has been, been, been teaching and, and what she's gonna to continue to teach in the weeks to come. But he says, listen, that we need to put the kingdom first. And that might seem kind of kind of basic, but too often we kind of go through the through life and we use the word of God and the principles in the kingdom of God as supplement there are some as a supplement you know we have our main thing in life and we try to supplement what we're missing with the Word of God we try to supplement what we're missing in prayer we try to supplement what we're missing in the kingdom but he says no that that needs to be the main thing that we seek first God's kingdom it needs to be the number one priority in his life and he continues to teach us he says you know ask and you'll receive seek and you'll find knock and the door will be open to you he says listen if you seek after me i am going to answer you and in this case he says seeking after the holy spirit who is our comforter he is our teacher he is the one that produces true freedom in our lives when we seek we're going to receive. You know, we're going to talk today about also seeking wisdom. And, and what kind of wisdom is that? Seeking, seeking wisdom that is the fear of the Lord. And so we're going to address that today, the fear of the Lord. And this is going to tie into a little bit of the message I preached uh, two weeks ago on Sunday night at the service. I'll do a couple little refreshers just to make, for those that weren't there. But this wisdom that we're seeking, you know, he says in Scripture, in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, Solomon says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And so the, the fear of the Lord is the starting place of all knowledge. And he's not talking about just knowledge about how to build something or how to do something or how to, you know, in life. He's talking about knowledge that is found in the Word of God. He's talking about knowledge of the kingdom. He says, seek first. He says, he says here that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of that knowledge. And he also says in Proverbs chapter 9, in verse 10, he says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And so the fear of the Lord is the starting place, which is knowledge, you know, how, you know beginning to, to know what the Word of God says. And then as we, the fear of the Lord helps us to activate that knowledge that we receive in the Scripture, and it becomes wisdom. Now Solomon, 
you know, we, many of you know the story, and if you don't, I'll just give you a little quick refresher. You know, if you went to Sunday school and had the felt board, you may have had a felt pic picture of Solomon. You know, and Solomon was David's son. He was the heir to that throne. And, and he, he, when he took the throne, God says, listen, I'm gonna give you whatever you want. What do you want, Solomon? And Solomon had one request. He says, what I seek is wisdom. And, the, and God says, because you asked for wisdom, because the wis wisdom was your priority. He wasn't talking about just worldly wisdom. He's talking about kingdom wisdom. Because you asked for kingdom wisdom, I'm going to give you all the other things. You're going to be, you're going to be prosperous. You're going to have a long life. You're going to have wealth. You're going to, you're going to have great influence. And all of these things actually were produced because Solomon was exercising the wisdom of God in his life. And the sad thing about Solomon, you know the story, is that Solomon, you know, that he may have began his journey that way, and, and because he enacted what the Word of God taught him, he produced this amazing kingdom on earth. But then he lost sight of the fear of the Lord. So he understood and he started off and, and he received all the success because he understood the fear of the Lord was the beginning of wisdom. But he had lost sight of it and it was one of the great tragedies in the Bible. And so what is this fear of the Lord? How is the fear of the Lord the beginning of wisdom? And you can read lots of commentaries and they'll tell you, you know, it's not really fear. You know, he's talking about, you know, you have to respect God. You have to have an awe for God. And this is, this is true. But however, you, you lose the, just saying those words sometimes, you lose the, the weight of what this statement is actually saying. Because fear is definitely part of it. Reverence is as well. Awe is as well. But I want you to imagine the, the, the greatest natural wonder you've ever experienced. Take, for example, the Grand Canyon. You know, the Grand Canyon, you go, and if you were to stand on the edge of the Grand Canyon, it would fill you with such awe at seeing this, this natural wonder, the vastness of it, how wide and how deep and how long it goes. It would fill you with such awe at the wonder of this, of this, uh, um, of this uh, natural wonder. You definitely have an element of, of reverence that I need to respect where I'm at. I need to respect where I put my feet. You know, and there's definitely an element of fear as well because, you know, I don't want to, you know, I need to respect this because, man, if I fall, I'm going to be falling for a bit, you know, and I'm not surviving that fall. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, when we think about the, the fear of the Lord, we need to kind of put it in this, this mindset that this is the starting place of true wisdom. And, and that is that the foundation of this is that this great awe, this respect, and even fear of who God is, that He is a great and holy and mighty, powerful God. His love is vast, but His wrath is real. You know, to, to have this, this wonder, you know, I love you know, how Isaiah, you know, teaches this, you know, when he says in Isaiah chapter 6, and he, and he sees the, the greatness of God when he's caught up in the heavens, and he can't help but cry holy. And, and it's just, you know, he sees this, this, the majesty of God. And so this is the foundation of all wisdom. And this wisdom is what is the foundation of true freedom being exercised in our life. And so to have this, this, this revelation of, of, of who God is. And so I want to kind of break down three things here in Proverbs. And number one is that the fear of the Lord operates as an anchor in our life. It operates as an anchor. Proverbs chapter 4 says in verse 7, it says, and we'll do the rest of it in a minute, but it says in verse 7, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Listen, if you can seek anything, seek wisdom. He's saying it's the number one thing. It's, it, it, this, if you're going to go after anything, this is what you need to go after. Wisdom of God's word. 
and that this is, this is the foundation. And the foundation of this begins with the fear of the Lord. And if, as I have that revelation of who God is, I'm able to exercise this principal thing. Wisdom is the anchor. And see, this is the problem that Solomon had. You know, Solomon understood that, that, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And he saw much success in his life because of it. But later he got distracted to the left and to the right. You know, his fame had brought all these opportunities to where he began to bring in all these extra wives and concubines to, to grow his power and his influence. And it caused him to be distracted and to worship these false idols. You know, and we see this happen sometimes, you know, for example, you know, in the ministry, you see it, you know, men like, you know, Jimmy Swaggart and, and other ones back in the 80s, you know, who had, who had, were up, you know, we've seen it even recently in some of the things with Hillsong and, and different places, you know, but we, we, we see this thing where, where, where men of God, you know, I, I imagine their starting place was here. You know, I have this, this, this fear of the Lord. I have this awe of God operating in anointing and power. Jimmy Swagger's ministry was one of the most powerful ministries, Holy Ghost ministries at the time, you know, in, um, in the 80s. And, but yet, you, too, what, too often what happens is, you know, once you, when you're flowing in that direction, and it doesn't have to just be in the ministry, but what happens is, you know, as you, if you give into a little bit of temptation, you know, I gave into a little bit of sin and nothing happened. You know, I said I was sorry, God. Judgment didn't come. I guess everything's okay. And then it begins to grow. And then you do it again. And then you do it again. And it begins to multiply. And it gets more powerful. And you think you're okay until eventually the ground falls out from beneath of you. You know, and so the thing is that the fear of the Lord is not just the beginning of wisdom, but it's also the anchor. The fear of the Lord is what keeps us anchored in the kingdom. It keeps us anchored in true freedom. Because again, we might start in that place, we might operate in that place, but it's easy to, that if we, we lose sight of the fear of the Lord, we still might love God, but we lose sight of the fear of the Lord, it's easy to step into sin. It's easy to step back into temptation. And so I want to challenge us today to, to look at the fear of the Lord as an anchor, as the principal thing in our lives. Going back to, to verse 1, he says, Hear, my children, the instructions of a father, and give attention to no understanding. He says, For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, Let your heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, get understanding. So he says, let your heart retain my words. The word of God needs to be the chief thing that we're continually pursuing in our lives. We can't live off of yesterday's manna. What God did in me yesterday, you know, the next day you might feel, I'm still feeling good, but if you don't go get today's manna, the next day you start getting weaker and you begin to get weaker. And the weaker you get, sometimes you start saying, oh man, I gotta, I gotta fix this. And we try to do it in our own strength instead of getting back to the word of God. The word of God is the foundation to operate in freedom in our lives. And I don't mean, and you know what I'm talking about. I'm not just saying, you know, I'm doing my five minute devotion today. I mean, I'm diving in the word of God, being connected to the Holy Spirit saying, all right, Holy Spirit, I, I, I'm, I'm here today to receive what you have for me in your word, that it will produce life inside of me. He says, he says, retain my words, keep my commands, and live. Live that freedom, living life in victory comes from the word of God. 
It comes from retaining his word in our hearts, that we are operating in a place in the fear of the Lord, that we are just, we are consumed with, with his presence. And God, I, 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 I don't want my eyes to go anywhere else. My, my, my eyes are fixed solely on you. You are the passion and desire of my heart. I want you so bad. And we can all relate to that first, you know, that, that relationship we had when we were younger and we just became so infatuated, so in love with that, that young lady or that young man. And it, it consumed all of our time. You know, I see it with my boys sometimes. You're like, what are you doing? Nothing. You know, they're like texting, calling, visiting, you know, some girl, you know, and they just, you know, they kind of, they get that, that, that get caught, you know, in that just wanting to talk to her continuously. And I remember that with, with Kelly, you know, wanting to talk to her continuously, wanting to be with her continuously, always over at her house. I'm sure it drove her parents crazy, but always wanting to be around her. Our love for the Lord needs to be like that. Our desire for him needs to be like that. Lord, I can't stand to be away. You know, I, I want to be in your word. I want to hear what you have to say to me. You are the desire of my heart. You are the focus of everything. You know, I'm, you're, you're going to be the anchor of my life. They, my, my, my heart retains your word. I'm going to keep your commandments and live. You know, and as we're in God's word, you know, and, and we're in his word and we're in this place of, you know, okay, I'm operating in the fear of the Lord. God, God is my, my anchor. You know, I don't, I'm not giving waste place to anything else in my life. As we're, as we're in that place, he says, listen, he says, also, for I, I give you good doctrine. You know, when we're in that place, it protects us from false doctrine. You know, and I gave you this example on Sunday, if you're here, forgive me, but it's important. I want to kind of repeat, repeat this again. But one of the one of the doctrines that gets gets abused the most, one of the verses that gets abused the most in Scripture is when Paul talks about the the thorn that he had had in his flesh, and people say people speculate and they talk all kinds of commentaries. What was the thorn in Paul's flesh? And if you study Scripture in context, it's easy to see what the thorn in Paul's flesh was. It was opposition. It was persecution. Paul was continuously being persecuted. He was continuously being opposed. Everywhere he went to preach the gospel, he was constantly, the enemy was trying to get in his way. And he said, Lord, you know, take this thorn from my flesh that I may preach your word. And God says, listen, my grace is sufficient for you. But what happens sometimes is that you know, because we allow the, the word of God to be twisted, we allow doctrine, we, we believe what other people's doctrine are, are, are teaching us, we might say, somebody might tell us, well, listen, the thorn in Paul's flesh was sickness. Or perhaps the thorn in Paul's flesh was disability. You know, he had bad eyesight. Perhaps the thorn in Paul's flesh was some type of sin. And when we allow ourselves to kind of believe that, and then God's answer when Paul said was to take it away, he says, my grace is sufficient for you. What it causes us to lose the fight, to overcome whatever it is that we're trying to face, whether it be sickness, whether it be disability, whether it be some type of sin. And so he says, listen, I've given you good doctrine. Good doctrine comes out of a place of the fear of the Lord. You know, if I see God as a little God, it might be easy for me to say, well, listen, if God is this little God and I don't see him as this big God, which produces the fear of the Lord, but if I see him as tiny little God who I go to maybe when I need a little inspiration or I need a little help and, you know, something like that, when, I, when sickness comes my way, I'm not going to be able to have the faith to believe God's word that I can be healed. You hear me? You know, if I, if I have some type of disability in my life, if I, if I see God as a little God, if I don't see him as big God, you know, if I, don't, if, it does, if I don't see him as the God that produces the fear of the Lord in my life, you know, then I'm not gonna believe for, for healing or deliverance in that area. When it comes to sin, I might say, well, listen, you know, this particular area in my life, this area that I'm struggling in, the area of 
freedom, you know, I might say, well, listen, I'm not going to be able to overcome that, you know, because, because, because maybe Paul went through that. I see God as a small God. But when we see God as a big God who never lies, who always tells the truth, and when he tells us in his word that by the stripes of Jesus we were healed, when it tells us in his word whom the Son sets free is free indeed, when he tells us in his word that we are no longer slaves to sin, but that we are now slaves to righteousness, that we have passed from death to life. Excuse me. When, so when we look at the word of God, you know, we need to believe what it says. We need to operate in the fear of the Lord and see God as this massive, powerful God that can always back up his word. He can always back up his word. Because as we talk about, about freedom, you know, true freedom, again, is passing from death to life. I was one way, and now I'm another, to quote the chosen. You know, this is, listen, he, God wants to see a complete transformation in our lives. Like I said, and I keep saying it to death until, until everybody begins to believe what I'm saying. When we become born again, we are not sinners. We are set free. We are now saints of God. God has empowered us with his Holy Spirit to walk in victory, to walk in freedom, to walk free from the power of the enemy. The times that we give in to sin is because we've lost sight of the greatness of God. That we're not operating in the fear of the Lord. If we're truly operating in the fear of the Lord, seeing God in all of his glory, and we're like, this is the God that I serve, you know, I'm going to walk, I'm going to walk in holiness. I'm going to walk in the victory that is mine. You know, I'm not seeking after victory in my life. Victory is already mine. We have to change our mindset. I'm not pursuing freedom. I have been made free by the blood of the Lamb. It is mine. It belongs to me. God has gifted it to me. And he has empowered me with his Holy Spirit to walk in that victory and that freedom that he has given me. But in order to do that, there's, it's not about a strategy. It's not about this or about that. It's about walking in the fear of the Lord. This is why it's the foundation. This is why it's the beginning of wisdom in that, that, that awe. And so that's why it's so important to continuously to get in God's word and not just read it to, 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 to like I'm getting my steps in. You know, I'm getting my words in. No, 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 we're not getting our words in. This is God's word. I can't wait to read what he has to say to me. And I can't wait to pray and talk to the Holy Spirit about what he is saying to me. All right, Holy Spirit, how, what, how, do, I, how do I take this and make this alive in my life? I surrender to you. Lord, oh, I see what you just said to me. I believe what you are saying to me in this word. I reject all doubt that would try to come into my life. And you know how I know I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue to say it again. And again, I'm going to speak it again and again. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so he says, don't forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. They need to be a priority. It needs to be the center. It needs to continuously be on our mind. Because true, true freedom, he says, do not forsake her and she will preserve you. Mm, love her and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she will promote you. You're looking for that next level in life? Exalt the word of God. Exalt the word of God. I exalt the word of God by continuing speaking. I don't, I don't, stop, stop talking about how you can't do what the word of God says. Stop giving, stop giving power to the enemy in your life. Don't, don't, don't say things that are contrary to what the Word of God teaches. If the Word of God teaches, if it takes me my whole life, I'm going to continue to work to align myself up with the Word of God. And so he says, exalt her and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. We need to embrace this Word. We need to embrace this with Hold tight. Don't ever let go. And she will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory. She will deliver you. 
And so allow the fear of the Lord to be that anchor in our lives. It's more than the beginning of wisdom. It continually keeps us glued to God. And so when we ever lose, if you're like, you're struggling and you're, and you're, um, you're kind of out into the waves or whatever, the, the chief thing, come back to the very beginning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So I'm gonna get into my prayer closet. I'm gonna close that door. I'm gonna praise the Lord. I'm gonna worship the Lord. Father, reveal yourself to me in Jesus' name. Father, I desire to know you. I desire to be intimate with you. Reveal yourself to me in your word. And as we continue to pursue him that way, don't say, well, nothing happened. Continue pursuing them that way until, until the, the, the rocks in your heart or the, the walls in your heart begin to shatter and break and crumble. And so we're talking found the fear of the, um, the fear of the, the foundation of freedom is the fear of the Lord. And so number one is the fear of the Lord is an anchor. Number two, the fear of the Lord is a shield. And so he says here in, um, we'll turn to chapter two and we'll read verse seven first. He says, store up sound wisdom for the upright. Excuse me, excuse me, let me read that again. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the paths of justice and preser preserves the way of his saints. And so here, the, the fear of the Lord, as we're gonna read here in a minute, this is, this is, it's a shield in our life. When we're walking in the fear of the Lord, he preserves us, he guards us, he shields us, he stores inside of us sound wisdom. The fear of the Lord is like a shield. It reminds me of the, in, in, when, when Paul talks about the armor of God, and he talks about the shield of faith and how it blocks every fiery dart of the enemy. So what is this faith? Faith in the greatness of God. You know, it's like, I know who has my back. You know, the, the devil can give me all kinds of threats. He can try to come against me, but I know who I belong to. I know who is who is my father? You know, as we, as we continue to remember and remind ourselves, continue to look at the vastness of who God is, that it produces the fear of the Lord in our lives. It's a shield to us. It produces faith because the enemy can do and say whatever he wants. But man, if I'm connected with God that way, I mean, what's he going to do? You know, I mean, he's not touching me. I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry about what he's doing. I'm going to remind him that he's under my feet. And so, and so he says here, the fear of the Lord is the shield. You know, it's, 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 it's kind of like, you know, we talk about in um, uh, Matthew chapter 9, verse 24. You know, the, 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 the foundation, you know, is, is that solid rock. When you hear the words of Jesus and you do what they say, when you, when you apply the word of God, that's wisdom. You know, it doesn't matter what comes against you. The wind can blow. You know, we had a lot about that today. The rains come down, the streams rise, but that house is going to stand firm. You know, it's going to, it's when the, when the flaming arrows want to come against us, that shield is going to stand firm. It's kind of like the picture they, that um, they used the other day for Pastor Bob's sermon with the father. He had the shield and he was protecting his kid with the, with the arrows that were coming against him. But the fear of the Lord is a shield. But how do we get this fear of the Lord? You know, so let's just hear what, what, what the, the scripture here says in verse one. So to obtain that shield, to, 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 to have that. So it's not just theory to where we know we're supposed to have this, but so that it becomes reality in our lives. Verse one says, my son, if you receive my words. So step one. All right, I gotta receive his words. If I'm gonna receive his words, well, I gotta be reading them, okay? So I gotta receive his words. I got to accept it as absolute truth that the word of God is the highest authority in the universe. The Bible says that he elevated his word even above his own name. 
And so for us, it should put it, it should put it up there. We can't be like, oh man, I don't know if the word of God's gonna work for me. The word of God will work for us, but it begins with receiving it. All right, I'm gonna believe it. He says, and treasure my commands within you. What a powerful word that is. So it's not that I need to, to treasure it. Think about the thing that you treasure the most. You know, we had the play here, Pastor Bob, uh, you carried the other day. One of the, one of the cast members, one of the young ladies, lost her cell phone. I, didn't, I was here an hour longer than I wanted to be. Because this girl and all her friends, because they really felt her pain, because they knew the value of a cell phone, they searched every part of the building. They went back looking everywhere. They searched every place. They were calling all their friends, texting. Well, not calling, but they were texting all their friends, you know, trying to find out who had her phone. And they diligently searched for a lot longer than I wanted them to. They kept searching. And then after that, I finally was like, listen, guys, you're gonna have to continue the search tomorrow because I was trying to be gracious. But I know, I, I heard the stories how the search continued into the night, how they continued to reach out and call and, and talk to people. The next day, it was still, they were posting it on every social media thing. It kept going on. It went all the way until the next day at the practice and come to find out it was in another kid's backpack because they, somebody threw it in there, thought it was theirs. But it was a lot of drama, you know, searching for this treasured, thing. The girl lost sleep. She came into the play the next day and you could see the bags under her eyes. Perhaps she was weeping. I don't know. You know what I mean? But she lost this treasured thing that she passionately loved. Oh, that we would love the word of God like this young lady loved her phone. The United States of America would be transformed He says, treasure my commands within you. Father, I have to have your word inside of my heart. There's nothing better. There's nothing, there's nothing that can replace it. Oh man, I didn't get my time this morning. I'm just so busy, I don't have time for the word. It's not that that I'm so busy I can't read the Bible. Oh, Lord, I need to get some time in your word. I am going to, you know what I'm saying? I've got to have it. I treasure it. It becomes the greatest thing in my life. And that's how Jesus loved us. You, know, you read the parables of, the, of the, you know, the, the shepherd that lost the one sheep. The 99 were safe. He went out to rescue that one. You know, he, that shepherd did what he had to do. And that's what God did for you and me. He treasures you. It's like the lady that lost her one coin. And the Bible says she swept the floor. Look, you know, she was like the young girl who lost her phone. Got all her friends involved looking for this one little coin. And then rejoiced just like they all did. You know, when she found the coin, many, you th must have thought this girl found the greatest thing in the world when she found her cell phone. I mean, out the, the countenance of every cast member changed. I mean, it was like they passed from death to life. You know, and so here it is that, you know, God loves us that way. He celebrated even greater when you came into the kingdom than those young ladies did when they found that cell phone. And so as God loves and treasures us, he's saying, love and treasure me the same way. And God is his word. You know, so love his words, love his commands, treasure them. They need to become the most important thing in our lives. Verse two says, so that you incline your ear to wisdom. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Incline your ear to wisdom. And not only in that I'm going to continually listen to the word of God to produce faith, but in every situation in life, Holy Spirit, that I might hear what you're saying in this moment. I'm going to incline my ear to you. Though I'm in a storm of life, Lord, what are you saying to me right now? Opposition is in my way. 
I'm not going to complain. Lord, what are you saying to me right now? Incline your ear to wisdom. Allow the word of God to speak to you because you have treasured it in your heart in every situation in life. Amen? And so he says, and apply your heart to understanding. Apply your heart to understanding. You know, when you say, it's not in my head, it's in my heart, you know, what does that really mean? You know, but when it's in our heart, it's actionable. It's, it's who we are. You know, it's ingrained. So apply your heart to understanding. And we know that it's actionable. We know that it's inside of us. We know that it's not just knowledge that we have, but it has become wisdom inside of us because the Bible says out of the heart, the mouth speaks. What comes out of our mouth in every situation, okay? And so he says, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. So we want, we want faith to come out of our heart out of our mouth in these situations. You know, if, we, if, if doubt is what's coming out of our mouth, if fear is what's coming out of our mouth, if discouragement is what's coming out of our mouth, we know that, there, that all that is, don't, get, don't beat yourself up. I mean, just use it as a warning sign and say, warning, warning, hello, hello. There is an area inside that I need to fill with the Word of God. You know what I'm saying? And so don't, don't beat yourself up and be discouraged like, oh man, I've missed the mark again. Use it as a warning sign, an alert system. But you gotta be, you gotta be real with yourself, you know, and allow it to alert you so you know, Lord, I need, I need your word to take root in this area in my life. He says in verse three, yes, if you cry out for discernment. And so listen, it, it goes beyond just, okay, I'm just kind of, Lord, may I please have some more? He's saying, if you cry out, I mean, you've got to want this thing. You know, Lord, I desire your word to be alive in my heart. I desire faith to be operating in my life. I desire your, I got to cry out for it. I've got to want it. Cry out for discernment. And who gives that? The Holy Spirit does. Cry out. I need it. I want it. I have to have it. I can't live without it. It's my precious. I mean, I'm so obsessed like Smeagol or Gollum was in the Lord of the Rings. I've got to have it. I mean, you know, Smeagol, that's a good example. I mean, he was totally nuts and crazy. He had to have it. We gotta be nuts and crazy for the word of God. He says, and lift up your voice for understanding. So again, I'm shouting out. You know, we pray. Sometimes you gotta, don't be meek and think, oh, I'm gonna be quiet, man. Shout it out. If you were at a ball game, you would shout it out. You know, you, here, let, let me give you an example. When we pray, and I'm like, hey, guys, pray out loud. Lord, I just pray that you would, you know, you don't want people to hear you. Man, cry out, shout it out. Man, when somebody cuts you off in the road, you don't have any problem raising your voice and, and sticking your middle finger up in the air and hollering at that guy. You don't have a problem when your kids are being disobedient, letting them know how they're supposed to behave. You don't have a problem doing that. You know, so when the enemy is coming against you and you are rebuking the devil, you should be crying out. Hello? I mean, if I'm going to shout and go crazy over the guy that cut me off, I'm darn going to, I'm definitely going to be shouting, you know, when I, in that case, when I come against the enemy. You know, when I'm, you know, if, you know, if I'm like trying to get, you know, Kelly's attention, you know, because I want her to know, hey, baby, I love you. I'm not like, hey, babe, I'm loving you. I want to talk. I'm like, hey, babe, you know, I'm going to call out to her. I want her to come here because I like her and I want her right next to me. You know, I don't have a problem when I'm worshiping God, shouting out. You know, just like I might shout at a ball game, man, I'm going to be celebrating God's goodness even more than that. Hello. We need, when you, so next time we're in church and you guys listening online, don't think that you, you're not hearing me. I know you are. When we're in church and we are praying, man, open your mouth. Shout it out, okay? Let, let me speak it into the atmosphere. Amen. So lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver. Listen, you got to go after it. If you want this, you got to go after it. Man, if I told you there was a pot of gold, you know, out there in the field, you know, go get it, man. Let me tell you what, people, people will be going crazy for it. I mean, we just stick 
eggs with chocolate in it and the kids go crazy looking for all the eggs. You know, how much more we go seeking when it comes for, for silver. Seek wisdom. Seek God's word to be real and active in our lives. He says, and search for her as for hidden treasure. You know, go after it. Then, he says, then, verse five, then, an important word, you will understand the fear of the Lord. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord. And we haven't even got to the beginning yet. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And so if you desire the word of God to operate, if you want to be a man or woman of faith, if you want to be a man or woman of God who operates in the kingdom and power and authority, we have to seek him. We got to cry out. We have to desire. We have to apply his word in our life. Go after it. It says, then you will understand the fear of the Lord. So to take the fear of the Lord from theory and concept and like, oh yeah, I, I get it. You can write it down. That's not what I'm talking about. I mean grasping who God Almighty is. And then when Pastor Jeff gets up here and he's like, let's worship the Lord. I mean, you just can't help but just shout out in loving the Lord. It's not about singing a song. It's about getting in the throne room, in his presence. You won't, you'll be the first one up here in the front worshiping him because you have the this understanding you have this it's reality to you who God is amen and so I just want to challenge you today to enact this in your life and as you know the fear of the Lord it becomes a shield in our life the enemy can't get you sing that song can't touch this you know he can't touch you because you become invincible to the enemy because you are now in God's presence in that way. So finally, and this is a funny one, you can turn to chapter seven. He says the, um, the, fear of the, the fear of the Lord is a sister. So the fear of the Lord is an anchor, the fear of the Lord is a shield, and the fear of the Lord is a sister. Let me read... Um, let me read uh, chapter seven to you. It says, my son, keep my words. And again, he says, treasure my commands within you. Keep my commands and live. And the law as the apple of your eye. Keep focused on the word of God and on his kingdom. Bind them to your fingers. The word of God needs to be actionable. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And it's become part of who you are. Verse 4. Say to wisdom, you are my sister. So let's explain what that means in a minute here. He says, and call understanding your nearest kin. Maybe your, your daughter, your son. That they may keep you from the immoral woman. From the seductress who flatters with her words. Now we're going to read this. I'm going to read the rest of this to you. This immoral woman in, in Proverbs is always talking about sin. Okay? It's referring to the deceitfulness of sin and, and the enemy trying to operate in our lives. So you have the comparison here. This immoral woman that wants to lead the young men astray. You know, and he says, but let, let, let the fear of the Lord, let wisdom operate in your life as a sister. Okay, so like if I'm going on hanging out and, you know, you know, some, some, you know, floozies trying to tap me like they do, you know, just kidding, Kelly. <laughs> Nobody laughed. That was supposed to be funny. Anyways, but, you know, so you know, some, some immoral woman's like, hey, you know, baby, come on me. If I got my wife standing there with me, if I got my sister Amy there with me, you know, I'm, I'd be like, oh, I'm not giving into that temptation. You know what I'm saying? That would just be weird, right? So he's saying, let the, let the word of God, let wisdom, the, let the fear of the Lord be like that closest relative who you love. Let it be a sister. Let it be a brother. You know, let it be a, a father, a mother. You know, and so he says here that if we need to call it that way, to keep it close to us, that it may guard us against this immoral woman. And here we can operate in true freedom. Let's read it, verse 6. For at the window of my house, I, this is the, the seductress talking. For at the window of my house, I looked through my lattice 
and saw among the simple, <laughs> I, I perceived among the youth a young man devoid of understanding. So here's a young man who does not know the fear of the Lord. He's simple, foolish. Passing along the street near her corner, and he took the path to her house in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. And there a woman met him with the attire of a harlot, a crafty heart. She was loud and rebellious. Her feet would not stay at home. At times she was outside, at times in the open square, lurking at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him. With an impudent face, she said to him, I have peace offerings with me. Today I have paid my vows. So I came out to meet you, diligently to seek your face, and I have found you. I have spread my bed with tapestry, colored, um, colored coverings of Egyptian linen. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes and, aloes and cinnamon. I guess that was hot stuff back then. Come, let us take our fill of love until morning. Let us delight ourselves with love. For my, hear this part. For my husband is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. He has taken a bag of money with him and will come home on the appointed day. What does that last part kind of sound like? It's almost like talking about, giving a comparison here to the Lord, which it's not. But here this, this, this adulterous woman will operate in the spirit of Antichrist, wanting to, to deceive people. Hey, listen, you come with me. You know, you need to pursue your happiness. You need to consume, pursue we need to pursue, um, come, come to me, and I'm going to give you the, the, the comfort that you need. But he says, listen, the, it, it's all a lie, and you can avoid this sin if you keep wisdom as your sister. If you want to walk in freedom from addiction, you want to walk in freedom uh, from sin, you want to walk in freedom from fear, you want to walk in freedom from unforgiveness, from bitterness, from doubt, whatever it may be. Let the Word of God, let wisdom be a sister to you, walking step by step with you so that your focus will never go to the right or to the left, but will stay upon the true path. Amen? Amen. And so, again, we're going to, let me close with this, this last thing. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, but the fear of the Lord is also an anchor. The fear of the Lord is a shield, and the fear of the Lord is a sister. When we, when we have this view of God, it will, it will produce the freedom that we desire because that freedom is already ours. We just need to have that greater understanding of who God is. Amen? Amen.